Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the Technology Firm. Today we will look at Win PCAP versus N PCAP, and this is coming up quite a bit, so I thought I would just cover it with a quick video. So, for the people who aren't familiar with Win PCAP, uh, there's the URL right there on the screen, and it's a driver, and basically it allows your application to find your network adapter. And it's, I, I'm going to just Put it this way you get it automatically when you install wireshark so you install wireshark and if you don't notice it actually says we're going to install win pcap if you don't have it and so on and so on and so on so that's what makes wireshark work now there's a lot of other applications that use win pcap but wireshark is probably the most obvious that you may have heard of so that's that's win pcap so n pcap and and there's its url and it's it basically does the same thing as win pcap but from what i understand from my research it is a more current version of WinPCAP. And if you go to the uh, comparison page, you'll see that uh, WinPCAP, the development kind of ended uh, a while ago, and it only supports up to Windows 8, whereas NPCAP is more current, supports up to Windows 10, that kind of thing. Uh, there's a bunch of other little things. You'll see it in the write-up, but just, just in a high level, that's basically it. Now, I set up a lab. Here's my traffic generator. There's my laptop. It's an Alienware. It's an i7. I'm using its built-in Ethernet gig uh, adapter. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this, I'm trying to get the um, kind of the most common uh, setup that you might have when you use Wireshark. So people are using beefier computers, uh, gig Ethernet cards. Windows 8 I still find is fairly prevalent on support machines. A lot of people aren't putting 10 on yet on their support machines. Uh, work machines are different, but support machines, uh, Windows 8 is still prevalent out there in my opinion. We've got Wireshark, and then I put WinPCAP, and then we switched out with NPCAP as we went along. I gave them both IPs, and I put one copper Ethernet cable between them. All right, and that's it. So no switches, no hubs. I don't want to add to the confusion and have people ask questions about the test methodology. It's as simple as it gets. So this thing is going to blast packets here. He's going to capture them, and I'm simply going to tally how many were sent, how many was received. That's it. All right. So for the traffic generation screen, just so you know what we're dealing with, I, I have a single destination set up. It's not a broadcast, not a multicast, because that raises a whole bunch of other questions I'm not going to get into right now. Uh, but you can see here it's very simple. I have the IP of the destination, and basically we're blasting it with packets, and I can change the frame size, the rate, and or utilization. So based on these controls, basically it will affect the duration of the test. So I can pick how many frames I want, a million, a hundred thousand, doesn't matter. And basically that duration will change depending on what I do here. And then basically you hit start and you blast the box with packets. That's it. Simple. So here's the end cap results. Uh, sent a million, received a million, that kind of thing. Okay. So I'm using a hundred byte packets. So kind of on the low end of the scale, uh, just because I want something a little more realistic. I'm not going to put 68 bytes there because you're probably not going to see that too much as far as a bunch of traffic goes. So 100 bytes is probably the smallest amount of data I've ever seen and I put that in there and that provides a high data rate or frame rate is, is a better way to say it. So don't worry about the utilization right now. So look at the number of frames per second and that's usually what starts to tax your machines or test equipment. So you can see here same million packets sent or frames sent frames received 977,000. See, we dropped some, and we dropped some here. And all I did, same size, I changed the utilization. So you have to watch out for this kind of stuff. Um, and that's what I'm trying to replicate here. And you can see the duration isn't that long. It's not like I did this for an hour and a half, that sort of thing. It's a short little uh, transmission. So longer periods, obviously different types of results. Frame sent, million. Received a million, million, million. See, now it works just fine. Why? Because we have a larger frame size and a lower frame rate. See that? So this is another reason why I troubleshoot, or when I troubleshoot, I look for broadcast storms. People say utilization is only 20% or 15 or 10%. And I tell people it's not the utilization. You also have to look at the frame rate because that could be gumming up your access points, your servers, so on and so on. And the duration is along the side. So here, you know, it's 100%. That's awesome. Now we're going to just kind of really bump it up. I'm going to change the frame size to 128 bytes, and I'm going to put it up to 90%. Why not, right? And 90% of a, this is only a 1 gig connection, by the way, right? 1 gig connection. So 
million sent, 400,000 received. That didn't go well because, again, look at the frame rate, 761,000. Before, the most we had was 312,000. So, like, we're really hitting it hard. Change the frame rate to 512, and look, life gets better, right? So we can see NP cap, how it did. It did pretty good, right? And now I'm going to remove NP cap. And when you uninstall WinPCAP, just a little note for you, I have Windows 8.1, I had to go to the Programs folder, the NPCAP Programs folder, and I had to run the Uninstall Executable as an administrator. Okay, if you don't do that, I run an install, it says it removed it, but it's all still there. So I don't know if that's just my system, or I'm just not doing it right, but as soon as I ran the Uninstall as administrator, out it came, and life was good. So I put WinPCAP on, right? And I wanted to do this manually, right? I wanted to install... Uh, NPCAP manually and install WinPCAP manually just to kind of keep it obvious for myself. I didn't want Wireshark to install it for me. I wanted to do it separately. So WinPCAP test, million frames received, less than a million, same kind of deal. But down here, if you remember earlier, these were 100%, right? And now they're not. And down here, 400,800, 900. 400, 900, 900. See that? So uh, when PCAP seems to not perform as well as NPCAP. So if you look at the test results here, you'll see what I sent a million, the various frame sizes I chose, and you can see the NPCAP received and the WinPCAP received. And it outperforms it, I'm going to say 9 out of 10 times, it outperforms WinPCAP, sometimes just by a little bit and sometimes by a lot. So um, the, the moral of the story is NPCAP tends to give you uh, better performance, but, 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 I would strongly discourage you from using a software-based protocol capture tool or a packet capture tool um, on busy networks. And busy could mean anything, right? Look at the frame rate. That's the big thing. So you have to find out how your tools behave when they start to drop stuff and I did a whole other write-up on even if you get the packets how accurate is the delta time that's a whole other thing right so if you do want to capture packets on gig networks uh, even 100 meg networks and you want to state your career on it and be 100 percent sure I always encourage people to invest in a hardware based protocol capture or packet capture tool that's it so I hope that helped have a good day bye for now